Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us once again for Health Professional Radio. We'll be speaking with Mr. Mark Stadler this evening, CEO of Access Hope. He's joining us to discuss cancer care and why access to the best cancer facilities is out of reach for the majority of Americans, particularly those impacted by social determinants of health, or SDOH. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Mark Stadler, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here. CEO of Access Hope. Uh, what is Access Hope? Talk about uh, your your role as CEO and uh, basically give us a little insight into who Mark Stedler is. Sure. Access Hope is a company that uh, our mantra is to fight cancer with everything we know. We were founded by one of the most prestigious cancer centers, that being the City of Hope. Uh, we were founded four years ago to work with large employers and to serve their employees who have uh, oncology needs. Uh, my background, I've, I'm the CEO of the company. I've led the growth of the company over the last four years. I am not a doctor, but I am a, a professional in this industry who has led many other companies who have served uh, self-funded employers and their needs in the uh, in healthcare delivery space. Social determinants of health. Explain briefly what SDOH is, and talk about how to bridge the gaps, maybe why the gaps exist, and and what can be done to bridge this gap in nationwide cancer treatment disparities. Sure. Um, Social determinants of health, and in particular, what we focus on at Access Hope is that, unfortunately, your zip code has a direct correlation to your access to the best oncology care, and maybe even oncology care as a whole in the country. About 46 million people in our country live in rural communities, which can be considered a community under a social determinant of health category. That's about 14% of the population. Only 3% of medical oncologists practice in rural communities, and over 70% of the counties in our country do not have medical oncologists within the county. This means that some people with cancer have to travel hundreds and hundreds of miles to access care that many people in large, um, you know, metropolitan areas might have access to on a more ready basis. Simply put, patients who live too far away from from, uh, these big centers um, have substandard care and can be uh, subject to substandard care. And it's particularly impacting these people in rural communities. It seems to me that there was a time when some of the rural communities had some of the the best, most uh, personal medical care. That changed drastically and to what we have today. Is it because um, it's determined that there are not enough people who are going to be affected by cancer in certain areas? Is it because most of the resources that specialists have are in large metropolitan areas? Yeah, well, about 1% of a population is going to have a cancer, a new cancer diagnosis each year. So that's a fairly small number, but the, you know, the the situation is dire. Cancer obviously is a very serious situation. Cancer institutes tended to be built around large academic centers. Today in the U.S., there's only 53 what are designated as national cancer institutes and about 90% of all research happens in those centers. Only about 20% of care happens there because it's difficult for people in these rural areas to get into them. What we've done at Access Hope is built a model that delivers that expertise out to these rural communities where even primary care is starting to disappear in these rural communities as doctors have come back into larger centers for, you know, uh, to treat large, you know, larger portions of the population. When you mentioned that your zip code can determine whether you have access to the best care or to care at all, how can employers get involved to support employees in these areas? So, for example, we have some very, very large employers with hundreds of thousands of employees. Many of them have employees in virtually every zip code in the United States. These employers could see a difference in the, in the outcomes of, 
for their uh, for their employees who had cancer. They could see better outcomes for people in you know, who had access to uh, these uh, you know higher expertise centers. We built the company to respond to that to say, look, we can deliver the expertise of that NCI center out to a local treating oncologist and empower that oncologist, give them all of the information that they need to better diagnose and better treat their patient. We don't move the patient. We don't need to bring the patient to this center. But the, the challenge that we have is that medical, uh, particularly in the oncology area, um, the knowledge is changing very quickly. In the past, Medical knowledge used to double about every 50 years. Today, it doubles every 73 days. And we now know that cancer isn't one disease. It's a, it's over 200 subspecialties. And a, and a community based oncologist who are very competent to treat might not be able to keep up on the research and the changes in new treatment patterns or even uh, accurately diagnose a very rare cancer. So what we do is we come alongside that oncologist, help them to accurately diagnose the patient, and we then get them on the most up-to-date treatment plan, and that, that oncologist has us there to help guide them through that member's journey. Over 90% of the cases that we look at, we disagree with either the diagnosis or the treatment or both. Think about that. That's a very, that's a shocking number. And it's not because the oncologist isn't doing their very best. They just didn't have access to the updated research. They didn't have access to the changes in treatment protocols. And we can help that oncologist get that person on the right path to, you know, a successful cancer journey. How can the employer make sure that the entire organization is aware? Do you help the organization deal with the implications of cancer diagnosis on management or the company's bottom line or everything from from the truckers to the production line? Well, this this uh, our program is is blind to whether you're a truck driver or the CEO of the company. Mm-hmm. You're get we're we're looking at all cancer cases. We've built algorithms to find the people with cancer and to reach out to their uh, their treating oncologist. Again, it doesn't matter what level of the company you're in. Our, our goal is to democratize cancer care, everyone, regardless of their zip code, regardless of their background, regardless of their social status, should have access and a life and life-saving cancer care. And our, our goal is to bring that to them. We do that through these large employers who uh, are sponsoring programs. They communicate the programs to people, but we've also developed methods in which we are actually um, identifying the member in, a, in conjunction with their health plan and, and come alongside that member early in their cancer journey. Well, if you would, give us a website where we can learn more. Sure. Our website is myaccesshope.org. And we would love to have anybody come visit us there. You'll also see there's a there's a full range of other cancer support services from everything from um, you know uh, early detection all the way through um, you know programs that we can help people on their uh, their through end of life if necessary. Mark, I appreciate your time this evening. Thanks for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Thanks, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Mark Stadler. Audio copies of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also find us on Anchor, Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.